Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Distill Nation NZ Podcast. My name is Tom. I'm the owner and distiller of Herrick Creek Distillery, and I'm joined by my friend Cameron. Hello, Cameron. It's always a pleasure to be here, not just occasionally, always. Always. Um, and we haven't actually seen each other in a couple of weeks, probably. It's been a hot minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm excited that we get to... I was sort of like a couple of weeks of without sitting down to have a drink. I actually haven't had many drinks without this podcast, <laughs> to be fair. I want to say that's a good thing, but whether this is an excuse for a drink well i mean i would i would love for listeners if they happen to even if they don't happen to have the particular thing that we are drinking or trying Hmm. that if you are in a position and not driving uh if you're not driving and you are just happen to be pottering around the house and, and having a listen i'd love to think that people were having a drink with us yeah absolutely this is this is the kind of thing that's meant to do you yeah know? yeah i mean we're just sitting around having drinks and talking about new zealand spirits as we do um today something very unique in new zealand spirits i think and that's maybe a bit boisterous of myself though because one of them is mine (laughs) um but it's smoked gin and i think this is weird and out there and i love it i mean i i know how proud you were when you came up with that recipe and i know that it took you uh, more than one attempt by a bunch in order to get to where you were so i'm hoping that we can unpack that but it's we've we have talked quite extensively about gin and how, uh, if, if I think back to our uh, conversation with the Longs of Longshot Distillery, mm-hmm. and they were talking about how some distilleries are going way out there, we're going to have 27 botanicals and go nuts. And we then, if, if we were, for example, to look at your nine fathoms, when you're like, all right, I'm, I'm just going to bring it down to nine. Mm-hmm. I just want to keep it as simple as possible. And, and maybe, hey, maybe I'm coming in hot straight, o- straight away for the first kind of question on the podcast. You said with your original Moose Lake, it quietly got discontinued because you felt, hey, there are plenty of incredible distilleries making a clean, London Dry styled gin I'm not really adding anything to the discussion here. Yep. And now it's kind of semi quasi brought back in this form. Tell me how you arrived at the idea for like resurrecting Moose Lake as a smoked gin. Well, Moose Lake, first of all, is just a great name, I feel. For <laughs> <laughs> so I, I felt so it's bad. very on brand for you. <laughs> it is. Yeah. And I felt bad shelving that name. Um, and I thought, oh, could I use it for something else and stuff? And I was like, oh, no. So I sat on it for, I think, I guess it was about two years since I had discontinued the original Moose Lake. Um, but within that time, I've been thinking, what else could I do? You know, is there something I can add? Because as I've, yeah, as I've told you, I just didn't want to make something just to make something. You know, there's got to be a reason behind it, right? So um, my idea was, let's incorporate something nobody else has done, which is smoke. And like, why we've got smoky whiskeys? Like, let's have a smoky gin. Like, there's surely there's a way to do that, and surely there's a market for it. Maybe it doesn't exist yet, but it might. Plus, I love the artwork. Do you like the artwork on this one? I mean, yeah, yeah, most definitely. I uh, going back to some of your earlier um, Moose Lake, and if I'll be honest, Moose Lake, your Moose Lake was never really my cup of tea. Yeah, I tried it, and I thought. Yeah, yeah, it's a fine gin. Yeah, but it's just a gin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but going back to some of your earlier artworks for for that and for the for the nine fathoms as well, you've certainly it's it's evolved. I feel like mm. every every release is semi evolved. It's getting there, that's for sure. So my idea with this is, I like we did talk with the longs, and actually that conversation helped me a bit um, with finishing how I wanted to to move forward with this. Um, was I wanted to simplify the gin, first of all. So I'm using just juniper berries, right? And and this is the first spirit and only spirit I make that I don't make from scratch as well. So I buy this ethanol from Fonterra, like mm-hmm. lactanol. So this is made from whey, but it's all made in New Zealand. So if you want to have neutral spirit made in New Zealand, it can only be that, you know? Sure. If anybody's saying it's grain or 
sugar or whatever. It's from overseas. Um, and that's fine. That's, you know, it is what it is, but I wanted it to be a hundred percent New Zealand made. Um, so I went with that just juniper berries and I made it like full, fully oil, like juniper berries. Like there's so much oils in this, in the, in the other one I'll talk about in a sec. Like it's so cloudy. There's so much botanical oil in that. Mm -hmm. And so when people try it and I'm like, it's just junipers or juniper berries, give it a try. And they're like, oh wow. Like the amount of flavor in that is incredible. And that's that's the difference, you know? So that one is just about jamming as much gin flavor into a gin, not, not to be so light and, and fruity, but just like, yeah, this is full of flavor and oil. I love it, you know? Um, so I've taken that exact one, which is Moose Lake regular, you know, it's just unsmoked dry gin. Um, and then I've smoked it with Manuka wood this time. And right. very Kiwi. So there we are. So I think... <clears throat> the first question I want to get into is why you got into smoking rather than adding manuka flour or, or even manuka wood as a quote unquote botanical. Yeah, and I had thought of that. I thought of manuka, kanuka, um, what, you know, is it the flower, is it the berries, the leaves, is it the wood? Like, you know, how, how do we put that flavor in there? But then it, to me, it was just I wanted the smoke. I wanted that right. extra element to it that you get when you go to a, a bar and they, they smoke the glass and all that sort of fun that stuff, you know? Trend, yes. Yeah. Um, and it's just an untapped thing in gin. So I thought if, if it works, that's great. If it doesn't work, I would have shelved it again. <laughs> it's gone, you know, whatever. But I think it works. Um, and I don't know how much of you, if you've tried this one as much. I know you tried the, the older release, mm -hmm. but I don't know if you've tried this one yet. But, um, Let's do that. Now, and, and for a technicality, does smoke count as a botanical? Mm, I don't think so. No? Well, I think a botanical is a plant, a spice, a, and a, you know, I think it's more of a biological. It's still an addition. It's still something that you're adding. But is that the definition of a botanical? Isn't a botanical right. a biological, like plant of some versus sort versus the ethereal nature of smoke <laughs> yeah. okay right I now know. i remember our conversation about belgrove and he was burning that sheep dung and then putting that pipe <laughs> into the barrel and trying to get smoke that way uh, traditionally if we're talking whiskey when you are malting the barley you're laying all of that barley out on a floor uh, you're wetting it down you've got a fire in the middle of the room and you're burning the peat and you infuse the peat with it that way how did you go about bearing in mind there is no barley or no grains to be malted here how did you go about getting that smoke into the bottle so i looked at this a ton of different ways and i did try quite a few different ways and of course the first thing i thought was let's make a smoky like whiskey mash mm -hmm. like as you would make a whiskey but the problem was with that is that that smoke that you taste in a smoked whiskey is is developing over years you know in the barrel sure so when it comes off the still it's not the same smoke you're going to taste three to 16 years later you know it's it's a very young smoke and it doesn't it's not something you necessarily want to drink right away and especially with manuka um manuka smoke when it's young tastes like garbage i can tell you that <laughs> um so that was kind of off the table I, after I, I thought about that that's no go so then i thought well the obvious next step is to smoke the botanicals right you take juniper berries maybe crush them up keep them whole put them in the smoker smoke them real good and then infuse them in the gin and then redistill it as you would usually but when i tried that um and i've tried smoking a lot of juniper berries now <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work there's no smoke it just doesn't come through it doesn't hold no no okay. and like um it just yeah it doesn't work at all so then i thought well th there's only one more step and it's to force the smoke into it mm -hmm. um and so I thought, is it pre-distillation or post-distillation? And I thought, you know what, I'm going to try first doing post-distillation just to see what it does. Uh, and it's easy to go overboard, as um, some of people would have tried with our limited release one before this like came out. But um, yeah, I think I've I think I found where it's supposed to be now. Okay. And it's it's this post-distillation smoke. This the gin 
goes into the smoker, it comes out afterwards, and it tastes smoky. So there you go. I mean, and it's packed. Like, even with smoky oils, I, I find there's that, it, it's in there as well. Um, and I don't know, what, what do you need this for, really? But, like, you know, I, I, I like to drink it straight, personally. Um, what is the strength on that one? 40. Four, oh, okay. Yeah. So, Very again, again, it's a nice, uh, on, on top of the fact that Nine Fathoms isn't a smoked gin, it's a nice point of difference there because... For some people, you start talking fifty-seven percent, and it is it's intimidating. Scary. Yeah, 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 yeah. So now, I, I mean, there's smoke. There's the smoked moose lake, and there's the unsmoked moose lake, which is a very regular juniper gin, but it's just packed with botanical oil. So that does seem to appeal to people who don't want to go fifty-seven percent and who don't want to go smoked. Um, and people seem to like the simplicity. Going back to the simplicity of gin, mm. so that's that's becoming quite appealing to some people. Um, but yeah, for me, like the smell right up front is just a a, a, a gentle smoke. It's not overpowering, you know. It's yeah. not like if, you, if you're thinking about like a Lefroy or something, it's not like that. You know, no. like it's not like those sort of smoked whiskeys. It's gentle, sweet, honey-ish almost, mm -hmm. you know. Um, toasted, like... Mm, toasted something, you know. Yes, like, I, I, I mean, a, a typical note for me with anything um, Manuka smoked is a, like a really dark bread, like your, yeah. your really thick grain bread, that toasted with butter. Yes, yeah. And you get some of those darker grains, but there's a sweetness of the of the butter and a wee bit of honey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's... And yeah, the, the, the smoke is... It's certainly something different, but it's not the kind of reach out grab you by the collar and, and shake you around <laughs> kind of smoke that you'll get from um from some whiskies perhaps yeah and i think you know right underneath that smoke you, you do get that juniper that just sort of is, is like really integrated with the smoke it almost you almost think it's the smoke but it's there is juniper there you know and, and that's to fulfill the requirements of what to be able to call it gin yeah, to versus be able to gin. moonshine. Yeah, and I think they actually work quite nicely together. Would um, you make a smoked moonshine? I, yeah, I would, would love to. Because, <laughs> I mean, the process is virtually the same, yeah. right? Yeah, I should. Well, it's I tomorrow's mean, job. <laughs> 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 There's always new jobs yeah, for tomorrow. Yeah, exactly, yeah. That, um, yeah, I think, you know, if you're going to have a nice something simple gin, and this, this really is a pilot for me. This is a pilot program, you know, and I do intend it to stick around. Um, I love it in its current form. But now that I've opened this box, I think there's much more we could do. I think there's much more other people can do. I think smoke is the final frontier for gin. Did you say is or isn't? Is. Is. Yeah, I was just, I was, sorry, I was just a wee bit lost there. <laughs> because it does, it comes out with that, that beautiful mix of sweet, hint of savoury, that, yeah, that lovely. I get that almost like there's that barbecue sauce note yes. almost to it. I, I, I wanted to. Oh, I wanted to say barbecue sauce. <laughs> I wanted to say barbecue, but I was like, no, that's that's silly. It's not. And the fact that you did, and I, I'm like, no, oh, no, <laughs> just have. say it, just say it, because that's totally what it is. And there's that. Man, my nook is so weird, and I wouldn't know how to describe it to somebody that's never had it before. Because yeah. you, because you're like, it's well, it is, it's a bit sweet, like honey, but savory like barbecue sauce there's a bit of herbaceousness in there that's a wee bit grassy but like a kind of like a fennel kind of yeah it is hard to describe it's, it's, yeah. it's just got a lot you just gotta on. try it everyone <laughs> but I, I think maybe that is part of the because if you were to try and add more botanicals to this well, they're either going to fight with that manuka or they're going to get lost. And it, it's it's complex enough 
on its own to be giving you all of these this this great palette of light and shade um <laughs> that yeah why would you then feel like oh well i'd better go and add some coriander and some yeah lemon exactly. peel and and because i mean sometimes what happens with gin i think you know you add <laughs> one botanical and you think oh well, I need this other botanical now to balance this one. And then sure. suddenly you've added that one. Well, I need this one to mold those ones together. And then suddenly it's like, oh, yeah, but that's good. But then I think the addition of this would be really nice to complement <laughs> that. And then the, the cycle And then you're at 27 on. botanicals. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Whereas, you know what? Like, gin is just juniper spirit, really, you know? Um, so let's take that. It's this one smoked. And I think... I think, yeah, like I say, though, I think you could do more with the smoke. I think there's other possibilities for smoke. Not only just single smoke, but like mash wood bills for smoke, you know? It doesn't need to be a single wood. Um, okay. So I think, you know, there's, there's options there for that. Um, but I, I've been trialing this now at events since November, uh, and it is now April, right? It is April. It is April, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, and this might come out in May. But... Um, Basically, the, the the reaction has been some people who smell this go, mm -hmm. whoa. And it's just suddenly you can see a light bulb go off in their head. They're like, that is so cool. You know, they just think it's the neatest thing. And I remember we took it. I think the first time we trialed it was at the Juniper Collective uh, for their, their um, Aotearoa Gin Weekend. And I just had a bottle there unlabeled on the desk. And I was I, you know, we just tried it with people just to say, hey, do you want a sneaky test of this? You know, tell us what you think. And um, everybody wanted to buy it. Everybody was there. And, and these are hardcore gin drinkers mm. at this event. Um, and we, so we, we sent them bottles the, uh, the next week when it was ready. And they were all gone in a day. Um, like people really, once you try it, it sounds so weird. But once you try it, it just sort of clicks. And not everyone loves smoke, to be fair. Yeah. You know, I tried it this week or last weekend at Agfest in, in Greymouth. Most people loved it, and then there'd be those few people who'd say, oh, I just don't like smoke, you know, and that's fair enough, you know, yeah. hey, great, you yeah, know, and then usually they tried the unsmoked one, and they loved that one, you know, <laughs> and it was great, so, you know, yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's a group out there that will enjoy it, even if they don't think they might enjoy it, I did see a lot of people try it and like it, um, it's something different. So it's enough customer feedback for you to want to consider adding this to your core range, your staple range. Yeah, I'm going to keep it around for sure. I think it's unique enough and I think it's tasty enough. Um, that I, I, I love it. Yeah. I mean, yes, I think going back to the... you Yeah, it was Belgrove with their holy shit, yeah. W-H-O-L-L-Y. <laughs> and... Now you, you'll have to remind me because you were the one that was actually there, but they were creating different levels of smoke. You could buy they different grades of smokiness, and that there were some that were the way more smoked yeah. than others. Yeah, like because you mentioned earlier the one where he in like pushed the smoke into the whiskey. You know, yes, into that the was, barrel. That was the extreme version. Like he, yeah. was, the whiskey was in the barrel. He put the pipe in the whiskey. Yeah. and forced it through. There was no other way for the smoke to go. It was just being pumped through. It was bubbling up with smoke, and then it turns out black. It's black whiskey. And that was so extreme, even for me, a smoke like, you know, enthusiast, that I was like, oh, that's a bit much on the smoke for me. But he also just smokes the grain. He smokes the barrels when they're empty. Um, so there's different levels of it for sure. Because you could get to, and here's my segue, mm -hmm. you could get to a point because that's quite clear. Mm -hmm. And I suppose you could smoke it to a point where... What I would go a yellowy or discolored kind yep. of, which then brings us to this because uh, you're not the only one making a, a, a smoked whiskey. We've got this one. Gin. Oh, smoked gin. <laughs> That's all right. Yep, there we are. My first slip up. I knew it was going to happen. Um, this one from Southwood. Wild. Hang on. That second word is rosemary, but I'm. Let me see. Oh, smoked, smoked, of course it's smoked. Yeah. Smoked. Yeah, smoked rosemary. Smoked rosemary, rosemary, raspberry, <laughs> rosemary. It's been a long, long day. Um, so 
Okay, so southward um, out of Wellington, mm -hmm. um, relatively central there. Do you know how they make this one? So I don't. Um, and I was hoping we would talk to Frankie. Frankie is the Canadian um, who runs Southward Distilling. Um, and I'm sure we will get to talk to her. She was just busy with events um, this summer, quite a few events. Um, but I, I think we have to take this by what we look at it. And I am thinking as well, this is smoked post-distillation. Sure. Just given the color. Yep. Um, and uh, the intensity of it in there. Um, but that's all I know. I don't know where, exactly how the colors come through, you know, but I know it's just rosemary that's being smoked for sure. And, and I mean, these are all questions that we would love yeah. to put to them about uh, whether this is their standard base or whether they're making a special yeah. base for, for their gin. But I mean, by color alone, and the fact that it was smoke, we figured, well... We've got to try it, it, right? Yeah, yeah this is the only other one that I know of in New Zealand that's uh, smoked. In fact, like worldwide, um, when I did research, I, I really could only find about six smoked gins in the whole world, you know? Wow. I, I really couldn't find more, and I couldn't find any that I could get down here, of course, other than um, southward. Um <laughs> I'm nowhere near that glass, and already I'm like, oh, somebody put a roast on. That's... <laughs> what? Yeah, there is absolutely no mistaking rosemary. It yeah. could not be anything it else. jumps out at you, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because like when you say a roast, like it's that, like, yeah, it's that smell of like the, the roast is in the oven and you're yep. in the other room and you're catching that, that scent yep. of the you, rosemary you, coming in. You yeah. put a few sprigs of rosemary around whatever's on that roasting tray and you pick that up. Yeah, yeah. it's quite sweet actually, um, that, that, smell, that smell. And um, But the gin's down there. It yeah, definitely. Is. And it's, I'm trying to, I'm trying to work it out for my own mind. Cause sometimes, um, like going up to my father-in-law's and if he's cooking something on the Weber, then he might put some rosemary down around whatever, whatever it is that he's cooking. Cause he wants the leaves of the rosemary, um, sprig to burn and right. to char. Yeah. And I don't feel like I'm getting that. I don't feel like I'm getting a, a charred, ashen no. rosemary. Hmm. It is, um, it, it's, it's rosemary. I don't know that it's smoked. Like, 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 you know, with, with the most, like that one's definitely like burnt, you know, smoked, burnt. Sure. But this could be a different type of smoke, really. Like, almost like, um... Like if you were to like sage a room or something, you know, like a really gentle waft of like, you know. <laughs> just, um, just gently burn the edge yeah. and, and wave it around. Yeah. That's, um, I keep going to smell the microphone because I'm, I'm trying to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I definitely smell the gin and I think the gin's the, where the sweetness is yes. a lot coming from. Um but on the, the you know, the, the flavor is just a big old hit of rosemary. Um, because, yeah, that is all it says on that bottle. Mm -hmm. Wild release, smoked rosemary. So it's not talking about any other botanicals. It's not talking about anything else going on. No. 45%. Um, it's got a, I mean, it's got a lot of flavor to it. That's for sure. Oh, Yes. Yes, it does. And that lingers as well. And I do remember watch seeing her at an event and, you know, she suggested um, ginger beer, ginger ale. It's really good for that. Um, anything with smoke, great with ginger ale. I think so, because right at the back of the palate, I'm getting that um, as, as acidity or, or the, the, that kind of slightly bitter note that you can get with rosemary yeah, yeah yeah and that's just sitting so yeah the, that that finish kind of washes over and then right at the back of the tongue i'm getting that kind of bitter rosemary note and so yes i think adding something like a, a ginger ale or a ginger beer 
is just going to sweeten that up and, and knock that bitter finish yeah. out. Thinking about the flavor, I think what's happened is she has burnt the rosemary, like mm-hmm. given it a good, you know, quick um, fire of some, some method, dunked it in the gin and left it to sit for a certain amount of time. And I think that's where all the color's coming from and everything. That I think the, the, the flavor of it gives me that that infusion taste, you know, the infusion of, of rosemary having sat in there for a little while. Not, not, not in a bad way, just like it's definitely mm. pulled out the flavor. But you, yes, if, if, we're, <laughs> if we're playing Spirits Detective, yeah. which, which sounds like it could be a spin-off TV show, <laughs> and then people would be disappointed that we weren't kind of doing a Wellington Paranormal thing. Yeah. No, spir- Spirits <laughs> Detectives. Um, haunted yes. distilleries, there's one. We'll go into <laughs> the distilleries and see which stills are haunted. <laughs> but I, I, I feel like, yeah, with the clues that we have, the information on the bottle, the, the colour of what is in that bottle... I, I don't think that that's the silliest what suggestion. Then I can deduce that this is the method. <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it, it's, it's all sweetness up on the nose. Mm-hmm. And, and then, yes, comes through. But it, it's that... <laughs> it's a full spectrum of rosemary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everything from that sweetness, the herbaceousness, that slightly bitter kind of into it as well but i think on a like a scale of, of smoke this was this is a one for me you know mm-hmm. like as a as where it hits and mine is probably like a six maybe mm-hmm. five or six five ish out of ten let's say <laughs> so like the smoke it's, it's gently smoked and I'm, um it's just a different method that's all it's gently smoked um but there's nothing gentle about no that flavor. It's a ton of flavor, right? It's absolutely packed with. Like if you pull yeah. up the old like Moose Lake, you'll um suddenly this this smells like a bonfire. Yes, that's a fun fun thing for anybody listening. If you want to ever have some yep. fun, um, <clears throat> put two side by side, you know, and um, you're really gonna suddenly notice. The differences in the in you know both of them that you didn't before yeah sometimes comparing and contrasting can really highlight similarities and differences between yeah. whatever you're looking at um i actually wanted to take this opportunity to talk about whiskey uh, because i was in at whiskey galore and i enjoy the chats that i have when i go in there and uh, Stephen, Stephen is a keeper of the Quake, uh, which is a very, very prestigious honour that you can get yeah. in the world of Scotch whiskey for services to Scotch whiskey. I didn't know he was in that. Um, yeah. he, he is indeed in that illustrious company. And he said, Cameron, this is what keeps me up at night. I thought, oh boy, this is going to be good. And he pulled out a bottle of Glenmorangie, A Tale of the Forest. And it kind of like, he gave it to me. And then once again, oh, I had to play Spirits Detective. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Because because he didn't, he didn't tell me what it was that was kind of on his mind. He just kind of gave me the bottle and gave me a look that says, all right, I need you to figure this out. So, the um, Scotch Whiskey Society uh, is very, no, Scotch Whiskey Association, rather, uh, is, is very, very strict about uh, what can and can't go into whiskey, the, the rules, the requirements, the regulations, the protection, like, yep. they are very, very protective. And... So it means that it can only be made with barley, water, yeast, put into a barrel. Um, There's certainly been some relaxation recently about what kind of barrel it can go into. But he gave me this Glenmorangie, A Tale of the Forest, and he said, come on, what's, what's keeping me up at night? And this specific one, um, the... Barley, how do I put this? 
the barley had been smoked, not peated, smoked. And they had put in, uh, and I'm putting in air quotes here, woodland botanicals like Ooh. juniper berries, birch bark, and heather flowers. So in, in place of your traditional peat, mm-hmm. they'd put botanicals in there to then influ- infuse with the grains and then made their whiskey with that. Wow. That's quite cool. And so, again, he was kind of... <laughs> I, I, I felt like I was back at school because he was prod, he was prodding me. He's kind of like, I want you to arrive at the conclusion here and I'm not going to give you the answers. And I, I said to him, well, this follows all of the rules, doesn't it? It's not breaking any of the rules. It hasn't added anything extra. And it's still like I looked at the label and it was still very much single malt scotch whiskey. So it's tick, tick. It's doing all of that. And he looks and he nods. And then I said, okay, well, if Glen Morangy is doing this and they're adding some juniper berries and some heather and some birch and they're using that in place of peat, what's to stop other distilleries from, is ginifying a word? Um, but <laughs> substituting peat for, okay, we have, hypothetically, we have reached a plateau of what we can do in terms of sticking within the rules and playing within the game with the level of experimentation that we can do. And so we're just going to muck around with different botanicals yeah. in place of Pete. What, and once that door is open, can it ever be closed? Mm. So, okay, well, my first question is, did it taste good? Well, that's just it. The bottle wasn't open. He oh. just showed. He just showed me the bottle. <laughs> okay. I know. I, I can't even. I can't even. How talk much about was it? Taste. Yeah, I want to taste it. Now. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, and and it's funny because in New Zealand, and we were talking with. I mean, look, you, we've got your gin here, um, but like Thompson Manuka smoked. Yeah. And we look at that, and we don't bat an eye because in New Zealand. Smoking with Manuka is just what we do. Right. Yeah. And it, it kind of... Oh man, I don't know. It's like this could be a major break with tradition if other distilleries decided to pick it up and make it as part of the mainstay of their stable rather than just one distillery, Glenmorangie being like a, hey, we're going to put out a limited release and kind of see what happens. Yeah. I just, yeah. But why not? You know? Why Ooh, not? But- <laughs> oh, I see. Because we, on the one hand, we've got Stephen and see me, me going like, oh, but this, this isn't this isn't the way things. Well, are I'd done. like to try it. I'd like to know how, like, you know, how much it influences it because I I don't know that it would like. It's not going to taste like a gin and whiskey put together. I don't think. You know, like it's going to be florally probably and you know just a bit more you know that's you know when you get a, a scotch a lot of times you're getting those light fruity flavors anyway you know mm-hmm. it's probably just adding to that you know i that's my guess of course i'm just guessing here but that is so cool i love that that is <laughs> that is cool <laughs> See, you, you approached it with a cool and i've approached it with a oh, yeah oh, I, don't know. I think this is this is the thing that there are now so many producers out there making all basically the same thing yeah. you have to do something different not only just to sell stuff but just to innovate you know like at some point there is as i'm saying there's a final frontier to everything for mm. gin i believe it's smoke for whiskey like that's that is one spot for sure, but I think you know there's others they can go with it. But that is quite cool. I like the idea. And I mean, love it or hate it, you have to give credit to Glen Morangie because they have been um, pushing out the boat, uh, where they regularly come out with a, a seasonal or a yearly release, like their what was it, slice of cake. Um, and then there was another one, which I think was called Glen Morangie X, which they put on the label. This is to be used with cocktails mm. and people got up in arms about, oh, you know, the old traditional never use a single malt 
um, whiskey and a yeah, cocktail yeah. brigade. And the very fact that they were pushing this particular one as, oh, no, 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 we've created this to be a cocktail mixer. Um, so you, you have to give them credit for oh, pushing definitely. the boat out and, and doing all of this kind of experimentation. But as you say, yeah, is, is this the final frontier? And do you think we could see a wholesale... I, 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 there, I don't see a future where <laughs> Scotch whiskey distilleries abandon peat entirely. No. I, I don't see that in the future. No. But could there be... And, and yeah, Glen Morangy is not... It's not one of the newer avant-garde ones that's trying to carve out a niche. But this it's is, no different than, you know, um, Belgrove smoking with sheep shit. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, look, that is peak Australia, if nothing else. <laughs> but that's the thing. Like he's that, he's, that's, it's the same sort of thing. He'd just smoke it with anything. Come on. Burnt tire. Go for it. Burnt tire whiskey. You know, what, what else is there in the world? Um, oh, boy. You know, just come up with anything that you can burn and make it a whiskey. Come on. <laughs> oh, dear. Who knows what it'll taste like? Burnt rubber whiskey. I don't. I don't. I know. no. I'm, I don't think. I don't think I'm going to advocate for that one. But yeah, and and I tried to. Oh, I tried to do some prep for this episode. I really did. I tried. Because um, <laughs> ages ago, uh, I watched Dave Broom's documentary, The Amber Light. And I watched that when it first came out. Um, it was on TVNZ Plus. And I went back recently, and it's it's not there anymore. And I tried to find it. It wasn't easily uh, findable. Mm. Because I think if you were to make that argument, basically he had a um, distillery historian and talking about how whiskey well before it was called whiskey we're back it's still very much Ushkaba, the water of life and it would be drunk hot off the still and you had your scallop shells and that was your your cups and this harsh hot spirit straight off the still was most definitely infused with different herbs spices yeah. botanicals to give it the flavor because it was I mean, this stuff never saw the inside of a barrel. Never. No. Didn't even get close. So, I mean, yeah, as much as there are traditionalists who might say, oh, but this isn't how it's always done, I guess if you keep going back far enough, you can then say, actually, this is <laughs> kind of where it all started. Yeah, and then it's like, how how pure do you want to be? Is it more about the, you know, the beginnings, or is it more about like what you think is prime, you know, Scotch, you know, era or... Yeah, there's questions there. What about this mezcal and putting like a chicken in the still and stuff like that? Do they do they do that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can put a whole lamb. They cook they cook the chicken while they're distilling the alcohol. Basically, the the still is cooking the chicken. Right. And then the alcohol comes out tasting like chicken as well, like 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 a chicken dinner or lamb or all sorts of food um and then they put all the other vegetables and stuff in there as well cook they're, they're making their dinner as well as i'm doing a run of, <laughs> of liquor <laughs> i mean this comes back to that <laughs> our talk of sustainability it's kind of like well <laughs> hey guys we've lit the fire um why are we going to light two fires yeah. are we going to waste wood <laughs> hell no we're going to do this as economically as possible is there any rules for putting chickens in the scotch stills well <laughs> yeah is there See, yeah well I, I i feel like that would very much be adding another ingredient so i, right. I can't okay. I but can't. you could smoke the grain yeah um, cook some chicken smoke the grain but yeah but if yeah if rather than adding it to the still if you were to add it to the fire in yeah. the malting room I mean, maybe then. You, what we should do is go to a barbecue house. You know, we'll go to Smoke and Barrel down the street. We'll take their smoke pipe at the top and smoke some grain with that. And now you've got barbecue smoked grain. That's a hell of a collaboration <laughs> and a partnership. <laughs> that really, yes, that actually... That kind of sounds good now, yeah. I, re I reckon we've got the contacts to make that happen. Oh, we definitely can make that happen. <laughs> 
So I was going to ask if this is, if it's while that's following the letter of the law, is it following the spirit of the oh, law? Well done. You fired again for your puns. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, look, I, you know, it's okay to push. I think it's okay to push the boundaries of whiskey, uh, especially with, with that sort of stuff. But just, you know, I don't think it's ever, anyone's ever going to be clamoring for barbecue smoked whiskey or, you know, gin mm. smoked whiskey or whatever it is, you know. But the, hey, you know, if that's what people want at the end of the day, that's, there's no reason the rules shouldn't change to accommodate that, if that's what people want. Or it might just become its own whole new thing, you know? And, and, and I think also it would have to come back to what is on that label, and that you couldn't say, because I, I'm, I'm aware of some people who use the words smoked and peated interchangeably yeah, yeah. to mean something that's kind of a whiskey with a smoky kind of flavor mm. peated has to remain peated but i i could see you know single malt scotch whiskey or, or single malt new zealand whiskey smoked and then if you were to add beneath this whether it's your juniper berries or your manuka or your whatever else i think just kind of just so long as people are clear about what's what's going on and what's in the bottle. I have one more weird example I remember from Tasmania, and I had Please. to try it because I went to the whiskey bar and I just, you know, they give you this book and there's, you know, hundreds of whiskeys and you're just like, okay, you know, which few am I going to try tonight so I don't get too sloshed before I go home, you know, but at least I was walking. But um, one of them was a, was a Tasmanian single malt and it was aged in a... It was a used maple syrup barrel, okay? And so it was right up my alley right sure. away. Sure, yeah. And then they had put that barrel, before putting the whiskey in it, into a smokehouse from a local barbecue joint. And they had left it for like a week or something like that. And then put the whiskey into this barrel. And then I was like, okay, well, I have to try that. It's so <laughs> out there. Um, <laughs> and I got to say, it was, it was a bit more weird than I expected it to be. Um, was yeah. it meaty? Yeah, but like not necessarily the goodest kind of meat, you know, like it was, yeah, it was a sweet, indistinct meat smoke. The, the maple was a little bit there. It was, it wasn't, it wasn't great, but, okay. <laughs> but it was a limited release. They do it once a year apparently. So, um, yeah, I was, I had to try it, you know, but apparently they're going to dial They were going to dial it back the year after they thought that was a bit too much. Right. So, so smoking, yeah. maybe maybe the final frontier, maybe not, because as you've, I mean, there is a long jump between um, smoking some manuka wood, toasting some rosemary bushels, mm -hmm. and putting a barrel or, or some grain inside of old smoke and barrel smokehouse. <laughs> But it certainly goes to show that uh, in the in the realm of smoking things, um, we've, as a country, as a spirits industry, uh, barely scratched that surface. Yep. So um, I'm excited to see where it goes, you know, and I hope other people try it out too um, to, to make some other smoke stuff. I think it'd be cool to see because I like it. If I just had one more thing, I like it because it's something we can drink right away. You know, and that's great. What well, that's the great thing about gin, it comes off the still. It's basically ready to drink. Um, whereas whiskey, if I'm smoking it with manuka wood, it does not taste good for at least two years. You know, like <laughs> it, it tastes terrible. Um, so that's that's the that's the advantage to it. And I think um, as a whiskey drinker personally, and not a huge gin person myself, I would gravitate to this sort of gin for sure. What would you add to that? Final comments. So, I mean, you drink it straight, and that's yeah. fine. Not everybody does. Um, I've, I've been doing the, the ginger ale, ginger beer sort of idea. It's quite mm -hmm. good that way. Um, as well, if you just put regular old tonic, gin tonic with it, um, it actually brings out a, a different kind of smoke as well from it. Hmm. The smoke does not go away. It definitely still sticks around, lingers. Um, I tried it in a Tom Collins at, at the Brighton Beach House a couple of weeks ago. 
and it was great. I have no idea what a Tom Collins is. I was just about to ask you what else goes into a Tom Collins. I have zero clue, but it was delicious. But it was delicious. It was smoky. <laughs> um, it was gin and smoke for sure. Um, and they told me they didn't do anything else to it. There was no other gins. There was no other smoke. It was just that. So, yeah. Um, there's, there's, I've only had this for a month as well, so I have not had the time to explore. But, um, you know, um, yeah, give it a try. Come see me at the distillery, try it, or the market, whatever you want. And if you can come up with a, a Tom Collins recipe or similar, you, you want to know about it. <laughs> yeah, I want to hear your recipes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, look, at, I, think that's, I think that's kind of where it is. I, I do think smoke. That's the smoke. Yeah. That's, God, you're so fired, man. <laughs> If anybody has any comments or questions about this, we'd love to hear about it. Um, at Distillation and Z on all socials, as well as uh, Distillation and Z at gmail.com uh, and Distillation.nz is our website. So please get in touch with us. We love hearing from everybody. Um, we've had some good comments, some good feedback. Um, people who might be coming on the podcast in the future from these sort of things, these discussions. So um, I think it's been quite good. So um, if you're enjoying it, if you have feedback, let us know. Um, reviews and all that good stuff they really help us out as well indeed yeah. cheers cheers everyone